Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Just lift your voice in one minute and ask the Lord to give you a very definite encounter. This morning, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Someone pray and ask the Lord for a mighty encounter by the Spirit of God. Shaliba kaso brande gebele kusa pras gebiash brante la kusa pras gebene keto sati valatus yeta. Let grace rest upon my life. Let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened even by the Spirit. New season for me in the spirit, new chapter for my destiny, empowered by your light, empowered by the spirit. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Hallelujah. I don't know what I just sensed in my spirit when Pastor Shola came up here and asked the worship team to remain. I sensed in my spirit that we should stretch our hands and speak to them because there is a dimension of worship that I see God bringing the household of David into. Can we do that in one minute? Just stretch your hands. I believe this is why he left them on stage. Go ahead and pray. There are mistrials, there are prophetic songs that will begin to come from them by the Spirit. Stretch your hands in one minute and pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, measure a thousand cubits for them in the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, may they hear the sounds of the Spirit. May they bring songs from the realm of the Spirit. Encounters, songs that become ladders for the body of Christ. Lord, you will raise mighty men in the name of Jesus. After the order of David, that they will write the songs of Miriam. Stretch your hands in one minute. Bless them. The sound of worship that is required for the next level of the move of God in this church and from this church to the region, may they receive it in the name of Jesus. They will stand in alignment like Habakkuk and they will see what the Lord will say. For in Jesus matchless name we have prayed amen god bless you let's give them a big hand clap god bless you please you may kindly return to your seat hallelujah yesterday i took out time to sincerely celebrate pastor shola and his wife beyond being a man of god beyond being a great man of god in fact i appreciate him we've had very rich moments um, where we've had to share to discuss and I love him beyond the pulpit I love his family beyond ministry <laughs> hallelujah and I can tell you that beyond being a very anointed man of God your pastor and his wife are truly good people truly good people <laughs> hallelujah and Pastor Shola thank you thank you for the relationship thank you for the love by and large, when it's all said and done, you've heard me say, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. Hallelujah. When God wants to help you, he connects you to strategic relationships. Even if you are Jesus, you will need men. Hallelujah. And so I sincerely thank the Lord for my relationship with Pastor Shola. Thank you for being a blessing. Hallelujah. And... 
I especially want to thank this house for your heart of honor and um, yes and, and I mean no I'm not a politician so this is coming from the depth of my heart there are not many places that um, you can discern honor when you come in you know that people's hearts are open and ready and it goes to speak to the quality of leadership that you are receiving here in this church because members will always be a reflection of the kind and the quality of leaders that raise them hallelujah so thank you very much for your love your labor your honor may the lord lift you and bless you in jesus name hallelujah let's be seated yesterday we began to discuss a few things at my session and it was to further help us understand jesus christ we stated a number of things why he came and we considered a few statements that he made about himself and then decided to capture one of them john 14 6 where he said i am the way i am the truth and i am the life hallelujah like pastor encouraged let me also lend my voice to ask you to get the teachings for this conference and take the time to listen to them again and again for the bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing there is a hearing that brings awareness but there is a hearing that brings understanding hallelujah this morning i want to consider um a charge really it's an impartation this morning and god is going to be releasing something upon our lives john chapter 2 and verse 11 this was the wedding in cana and of galilee the bible lets us know that there was a feast and wine had finished and when wine finished um embarrassment was imminent and mary led a few folks to jesus to demand that he would do something about that situation and he asked them to fill six pots with water and then to fetch the water and take it to the rulers and the bible says as they went in obedience the water turned to wine they received great commendation from the rulers and the bible rounds up that story by telling us in verse 11 this beginning of miracles did jesus in cana of galilee and manifested forth his glory that means the intent of the miracle was to manifest forth his glory and to cause men even his disciples to believe on him take note of the intent this beginning of miracles did jesus in cana of galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him john chapter 20 and verse 30 so we see the beginning of jesus's miracles as captured in john's synoptic account john 20 and verse 30 it says and many other signs truly did jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book 31 he says but these are written that we might believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that believing ye might have life through his name hallelujah so john speaks as to why jesus performed great miracles in john chapter 2 he says this beginning of miracles the manifestation of power was you know showed forth by jesus to the end that men would believe and that his glory would be revealed and he wraps up john the book of john by telling us that there were many other signs beyond that which we have seen captured in this book and that in verse 31 the intent still remained the same that jesus be revealed through the miracles as the christ and as the son of god and that in believing you will have life hallelujah this is very profound that means at the back of every supernatural manifestation that comes in and through the word of god at the back of every supernatural manifestation that comes by jesus even through his spirit is the intent of revealing jesus and the intent of showing forth his glory 
hallelujah that god is so determined to see his glory revealed that any scriptural means that can afford him that opportunity including signs and wonders including the miraculous he will not spare to allow it to be on display provided it will end up revealing jesus provided it will end up bringing him glory let me show you one more scripture mark chapter 12 from verse 13 mark 12 verse 13 hallelujah and they send unto him certain of the pharisees of the herodians to catch up with his words i have 14 now matthew my apologies let's look at matthew there's a scripture in my spirit that i want to bring out matthew chapter 12 hallelujah now watch this the Bible says he looked at someone and says, stretch forth your hand. And he stretched it forth and it was restored the whole like the other. Verse 14. And the Pharisees went out and they held a counsel against him how they might destroy him. 15. But when Jesus knew, he withdrew himself and the multitudes followed him and he healed them all. Pay attention. This was Jesus manifesting forth great miracles and the Bible tells us that the purpose of doing it was to reveal his glory. And now everywhere he went, he met multitudes who were in need of the miraculous, the manifestation of God in their lives. And even when they held a council, you would think that because people were conspiring to kill him, it should demotivate him to not want to work that miracles that his determination to see the glory of God revealed was such that even at the point of death that agenda was not aborted hallelujah that it was clear that there was a conspiracy around him to end his life to destroy his relevance but everywhere he saw the sick he healed them everywhere he saw trouble he attended to them and the bible says the motivation behind this was that there was a a desire within jesus to see himself the glory of the father revealed hallelujah this beginning of miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples and he manifested forth his glory and the people, the people believed on him. Now the Bible makes a very profound statement in Ephesians chapter 2 when you read verse 10. Let's read it together when we have it projected. Ready? One to read. The Bible says, and for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them one more time for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them do you know the meaning of this a man's workmanship means the tools that he uses to manifest the giftings and the abilities so if you're an architect your workmanship refer to all the tools that need to be in place for you to make all of your designs if you are a doctor a medical practitioner your workmanship refer to all the tools that you use and here the bible is saying that every time god wants to manifest his glory when jesus wants to be revealed in a life and in a territory he does not use things he uses men that men are the tools, the workmanship. I think it was Pastor Isaac who said yesterday, I caught that part of his teaching, that you cannot talk about the head and then ignore the state of the body. Are we together? Imagine that you were coming out of your house and you saw a very healthy head walking around. Would you stand and watch it? You will run away because the head alone is not a full organism is the head in partnership with the body and how many of you know that there are times the head can be healthy but something can be wrong with the body and it is both of them that go to the hospital you don't keep the head and say you are fine let me take the body to the hospital for treatment they are inseparable so the bible says that if jesus christ worked mighty miracles to reveal the glory of the father it then means the manifestation of power and grace is not limited to the head alone there has to be a replica of that to the body are we together now we are his workmanship 
created in Christ Jesus unto good works what good works you make reference to Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 down to 16 it says let your light so shine before men verse 16 says that they may see your good works and glorify your father so good works is a means of bringing glory to the father they may glorify your father which is in heaven now let's look at ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 paul was speaking to the church in ephesus and he says to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church by the body the manifold wisdom of god the manifold wisdom of god hallelujah i want to round up my session and this impartation session by helping you understand that jesus is not fully revealed until the saints are glorified as he's revealed the bible says in john chapter 17 verse 1 in theology we call it the reflection principle no object glorifies itself it invests its glory in another object outside of itself are we together the sun the glory of the sun is seen in the moon that the moon has no light of its own but then when you see the moon shining brightest it is based on its alignment to the sun are we together remember the dream of joseph that i saw the sun the moon and the 11 stars bowing and then jacob interprets that dream jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour is come glorify thy son do you see there that thy son may also glorify thee so the father does not glorify himself no the father is glorified when jesus is lifted and glorified jesus does not glorify himself the glory that comes to jesus is from the church in partnership with the holy spirit the church does not glorify herself it is the dominion of the church over the cosmos principalities and powers that is where the glory of the church is derived so when the father wants to be glorified he depends on the dexterity of the work of the son and jesus himself did a thorough job that is why the father remains eternally glorified the glory of jesus now depends on the health and the quality of the delivery of the church hallelujah let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds so jesus sends the church the holy spirit that the church in partnership with the holy spirit will perpetually put the glory of jesus on display that means everything jesus claimed to be everything jesus claimed to have everything jesus claimed to be able to do now the mandate is upon the church that in partnership with the holy spirit we are able to reveal that he did not lie we are able to reveal that he is still all powerful omnipotent omnipresent omniscient all of these qualities of god as captured and revealed in jesus must be on display by and through the church so the revelation of jesus is not complete until you find the revelation of yourself are we together now that the bible says like pastor shola was sharing as he is so are we today here and now in this life i always wondered why god seems to be in a hurry to invest grace and power upon willing and aligned men and i got to find out that he does not just do it because he loves them he does it for his namesake hallelujah he does it for his namesake so that we are able to be manifestors of his grace and power through the healings through the supernatural through the wisdom of god displayed through the saints that jesus christ is revealed and jesus christ is exalted and glorified if you walk out of this conference just knowing that jesus said i am the way the truth and the life knowing that he said i am the first and the last the truth is that you would not have done a thorough job in terms of understanding jesus that by understanding jesus he becomes a mirror so that you look at yourself 
that as he is so are we now today in this life not so we will become that means there is a mandate in fact he said as my father has sent me so send I you Lord you reign forever Lord you reign forever I worship you I worship you Lord you reign forever Lord you reign forever I worship you I worship you many many years ago I was singing this song in the night alone and there's a part of the song that says you reign you reign you reign and while I was singing for hours the Holy Spirit started singing that song back to my ears that you reign it is not just you reign there's a reason why I raised it that knowing that I reign is not where the revelation is you in your dominion because I reign you begin to reign reign as a king and as a priest and that came it was no longer a special number that if I refuse to reign I am singing a lie are we together now you reign you reign and you reign and he's saying you now begin to reign because I reign if it is true that I defeated sin death hell the grave and the cosmos demonstrate it in and through your life let there be a manifestation of the power of God in your life that everybody who sees that on display will know that it is true that Jesus is alive and that Jesus reigns this beginning of miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him believed on him many believers are not in doubt as to the many things that Jesus claimed that he was and he is but the challenge is that in the midst of all this glamorous proposition it seems to me that there is still a weak church disempowered and incapacitated having all kinds shades of weakness we stand before sickness and we're helpless we stand before the vicissitudes of life and we're helpless yet we continue to sing songs that exalt the majesty and the power of god and in the midst of its situations and circumstances continue to mock god in our life he is exalted the king is exalted on earth I will praise him. He is exalted forever, exalted and I will praise his name. You know that song? Help me. He is the Lord forever is true shall reign. so every time i read about jesus what i see there is myself i don't just see the majestic king if i read that jesus came to reconcile men that has become my ministry today i don't have to die he's died already but i must tell them that he died are we together if jesus came as a correction of the misunderstood god it means my life has become a manuscript that men will study my life and they will use my life to correct their perceptions about god whereas they may feel that god is angry and mad at them my life now reveals that the lord is gracious and compassionate that he is slow to anger and rich in love are we together whereas we may have received a proposition that god prides in our being weak and limited a man's life can be a television a vista that corrects the perception of a generation about god they may not be able to see Jesus physically today but we have become extensions of who he is and it matters how we represent him hallelujah 
the word represent means to present again or to present properly we are not just presenting jesus we are representing jesus so that there's no confusion as to fulgence of grace the manifestation of christ-like character you become the closest example to jesus that they can see that way jesus is glorified through your life unfortunately that is not the case for many believers if unbelievers have to depend on you as the only template that re that reveals jesus many people may run away from jesus and run away from the faith life because in truth our lives are not a healthy capture of all that god is my challenge for you this morning is that as we press to obtain grace the purpose of that grace is to help us to become clearer revelations of jesus christ as a preacher as a businessman i do not believe in the concept of christianity that has no applicability to our sociology to our world the christian experience was so designed by god such that it is not just limited to the spiritual health of an individual he calls us salt he calls us light that means the effulgence of that life must speak to economy it must speak to police polity are we together now politics it must speak to every fabric of society you may have heard my teaching on the great commission that the great commission is divided into three components number one is salvation of souls world evangelism number two is discipleship and the maturity of the saints but number three is societal and territorial transformation and any aspect of this tree that is neglected does not spell the great commission the great commission must be holistically captured salvation of souls world evangelism discipleship of the saints so that they can attain unto maturity and it's for that purpose he gave unto some apostles and prophets evangelists teachers and pastors hallelujah and then number three territorial transformation for a very long time the church seems to have lost its impact in society as light and salt so it looks like the relevance of the church has been boxed to a building are we together so people look at christians and say these are these superstitious people being led by their jesus somewhere and society does not seem to relate with our spirituality because we have sold an idea of fanatism without impact yet jesus never said you are the light of the church he says you are the light of the world the cosmos are we together daniel came as a light and his light as a single individual illuminated the entire babylon he compelled heathenistic kings to acknowledge the god of heaven shadrach meshach and abednego these were three ordinary people they never had the opportunity to speak in a radio station a tv station but there was such a display of the life and the power of god that even at the point to the detriment of their destruction they maintained their conviction and they caused the king to write a decree that everybody who spoke against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego would be punished and thrown into the fiery furnace how about joseph a man who based on a black male got himself into prison and yet his conviction did not dwindle he knew that he was representing the god of the bible and it was only a matter of time one time god gives the king pharaoh a dream with nobody with capacity to interpret watch the wisdom of the spirit saying that you are a christian is not just about dressing like a christian as important as that is it's not about just using christian words god is depending that through your life as a workmanship there must be a perpetual display if you have to tell somebody i am a christian then you are not a true christian the light from you should speak so loud they should not be at a loss as to the fact that you are connected to jesus a lot of believers say we are christians yet the wisdom that should come from christ is not revealed in our work there is so dull such dullness ordinariness in the things that we do no supernatural component the wisdom of god not everybody is going to stand on the pulpit to preach but everybody is mandated to reveal jesus as a consultant the display of wisdom the wisdom of god upon your life will compel all and sundry to ask you i learned what you know but there is an extra factor and you tell them my connection to jesus are we together 
as a student as a medical practitioner and even as a minister of the gospel i am challenging you that god is depending on our lives for the nations to see jesus revealed this is not just a biblical text where you open the bible and say oh he is the way the truth and the life that means you can show men the way the truth and the life by becoming an example of what you are proposing to them when i found this revelation it changed my orientation about ministry so for me i am beyond a man of god thank god for that status i am beyond being an apostle of the lord jesus christ i am a witness my life perpetually seeks to see jesus revealed across the territories in his entirety so i yield my members to him because i want every part of me to be able to reveal jesus let my mind reveal jesus let the works of my hands reveal jesus let my creativity reveal jesus let my speaking reveal jesus is someone learning now this is the relevance of this message so it does not just end by saying jesus christ is the way the truth and the life he's alpha omega as powerful as that is he's the door the living way but did you know that there are many things he also said you are and the moment you know him your next assignment is to know yourself in light of who he is if you do not end up knowing yourself in light of who he is then you will not be empowered to represent him properly john 1 6 there was a man sent from god sent from god it is important for you john 1 6 is a very profound scripture now you have known that there is a god it's time for the nations to know there is also a man did you hear what i said they have known that there is a god but they must know that there are men sent from that god let me say this because this may be the revelation that you came to receive we know that there is a god but let the nations know that there is a man sent from god his name is you and the bible says verse 7 the same that same man sent from god came for a witness to bear witness to the light that through his witness men might believe through his creativity men might believe through the supernatural working in your life men might believe through the kind of cooperation that you raise and build that men will look at you and say you are 25 years old yet you have built a corporation that would take men 50 years by what means were you able to do this and you tell them a certificate plus grace that cannot be found on earth i have outsourced intelligence through my fraternity with god there was a man sent from god there was a preacher sent from god there was a businessman sent from god there was a parent sent from god there was a young man sent from job from god there are children sent from god hallelujah the same came for a witness that he might bear witness to the truth that means anything in your life that is capable of misrepresenting god must be your project in this season to fight it by faith until you drive it out of your life that when men look at you you become a perfect reflection of the glory of god in its entirety are you with me that everything that can misrepresent god and rob him of receiving glory through the life of the saints in this case your life it must be your project right now so if poverty is mocking god in your life you take it as a project not because you are greedy for gain but because you know that through your prosperity it says worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us and he lifted all the things that he receives to make the lamb worthy when you are blessed today and with that blessing you are able to change lives affect territories feed the poor and the hungry you don't have to tell people i'm a christian they will search around the earth and say the only people who can do this are people who are sent from god did nicodemus not come to jesus by night in john chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2 he says rabbi we know that thou art a preacher a teacher sent from god for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except god be with him no man can give like this except god be with him no man can build an organization like this except 
God be with him. No man can love the unlovable like this except God be with him. The Christianity in Africa, unfortunately, does not seem to have a territorial applicability. Is the reason why there are a lot of churches, respectfully speaking, there is a lot of gyration in church, but society does not seem to respect believers. The reason is because there is a theology that has been sold to believers for many years that their faith work is very private and personal and it is no business of society that is not true you read your bible jesus started in the secret place but he did not end in the secret place his light went to the economy his light went to children signs and wonders communications of wisdom he met a woman at the well changed her life met Zacchaeus changed his life met the dead changed their lives met the living changed their lives he met children you would think that spiritual Jesus should not have time for children and when they wanted to drive the children he said no let the little children come to me and do not forbid them he says for for such is the kingdom of God our Christianity should be represented in every sector of society by the time Lagos becomes a healthy place with crime rate reduced to the barest minimum irresponsibility reduced to the barest minimum that is the revelation of Jesus to the territory and that happens through his workmanship myself and yourself recreated in Christ Jesus we must be models enough for people to see this is the reason why it is important for believers to prosper to be healthy to be enlightened to be intelligent because it is the preparation of the tool did the bible not say if the axe head is blunt as a tool if the axe head is blunt much energy will have to be deserted hallelujah many believers are not prepared to re to, to reveal jesus so we carry it as a cliche and say in the name of jesus i know that jesus is wonderful i know that jesus is mighty but it should not stop there elisha said about naaman send naaman and let him know that there is a prophet in israel it is good to know that there is a god but god wants the world to know there are men sent from god i will say it again it is good to know that there is a god in heaven but ladies and gentlemen please hear me as we prepare to wrap up this church age god wants creation to know that he did not just go and leave the earth empty that there are men who can be sent from god and their assignment is to be a replica a replication continuity to the manifestation of his glory and i made up my mind that i will not be silent I will always worship you as long as, as, long as I am breathing I will always worship one more time that I will, I will not, not be silent. I will always worship you as long. God depends on me for the nations to see him is an honor that nothing can compare with nothing can be compared with God isn't it amazing that there are people right now God wants to anoint you but as powerful as God is he needs the partnership of a man imagine what will be coming upon your life in a few minutes it was not just that God chose today it is today when if whenever God finds a man that becomes your today did you hear what I said? Those who are healed, it was not that that was a day God planned to heal them. 
the day he found a man sent from God who could reveal Jesus that becomes your day of opportunity profound that God can depend on me Joshua Selman to reveal him to the nations not just by preaching but that through my life there is an effulgence of the glory of God ladies and gentlemen while you are seated looking at me I want you to know that Jesus is counting on you to be an extension of the revelation of him many mirrors scattered across the globe scattered across different sectors revealing Jesus the various dimensions of Jesus some of you will reveal his love some of you will reveal his mercy some of you will reveal his power not everybody may reveal his signs and wonders there are others as the grace falls the aspect of jesus you will hold is his mercy that becomes your assignment for some of you the aspect of jesus you would receive is his wisdom and you will step into the business world and the the professional world and reveal the wisdom of jesus some of you you will re, you will receive that healing dimension of jesus and take it to the nations hallelujah you believe that now watch this please jesus called himself the bread of life that's what he said i am the bread of life and then he's at the communion table with 12 disciples and you know that 12 is the number of government hallelujah and then he picks the bread that he said he is and he breaks it into various dimensions and distributes it to all men using 12 men you know what that means that every man has a portion of him that he's mandated to reveal are we together now nobody has the same no you want to see the whole bread everybody must come and then you see the full picture so there are people who have received certain aspects of the word of jesus christ and you are robbing a generation from knowing god in a certain way if you refuse to allow your life reveal him you will think that just because god has helped us to do our work efficiently our witness is enough it's not enough it is my witness plus your own that reveals the complete jesus if all we have on earth are preachers we are in trouble because preachers are just a dimension of the revelation of jesus there is a dimension of Jesus only businessmen can reveal. There is a dimension of Jesus Christ only professionals can reveal. There is a dimension of Jesus only children can reveal. There is a dimension of Jesus only the aged can reveal. There is a dimension of Jesus only women can reveal. There is a dimension of Jesus only men can reveal. There is a dimension of Jesus only Africans can reveal. It is true there is a dimension of Jesus that demands that you start from a negative situation for men to see so if you say I am poor and I come from a family of witchcraft congratulations because you are given an opportunity to reveal Jesus in a way that someone who is free from witchcraft and free from poverty cannot reveal that transition is where the revelation of his power is hallelujah this has been my passion as i stir up believers to number one love jesus with all their hearts but number two to understand that there is a corporate mandate upon every believer your corporate mandate is not to make money your corporate mandate is not to have children your corporate mandate is not just to have a career all of those things do not have relevance in themselves until they become tools that help you reveal Jesus did you hear what I said looking for a job is useless as far as eternity is concerned except if the purpose of looking for the job is to better your life and to give you an opportunity so what gives credence to our activity in the kingdom is not the activity itself it is the fact that it can be used as a tool to reveal Jesus please listen to me apostle I'm tired of not having a child I understand and I sympathize with you but from an eternal standpoint 
having a child or not does not matter to the realm of the spirit when you're having a child now becomes a tool to help you reveal jesus and birth the next prophet now we will pray and insist that a child arrives not just because you want to take away the shame of barrenness but there is a bigger cause connected to that apostle i want to i'm tired of poverty that is not an intelligent approach to, to prosperity no lord i desire that you bless me so that with those the resources that come by next year conference i will come to pastor shola and say sir you do not need to bother let me just know the bill let's pray about something else let's pray about souls not money if that is your intent in a hurry god will bring the resources that means the hand of god is governed by the hearts that are determined to seek his glory revealed did you hear what i said it is beyond just your need being met you want to get answers from god connect your needs to the revelation of jesus and you have secured his attention connect your needs to the revelation of jesus connect your needs do not isolate your needs from the revelation of jesus it is barren and impotent you may not secure the attention of heaven let god know that the reason why you want to be anointed is not just so that the nations will celebrate you for nothing that is too empty an agenda to secure the attention of heaven take it high for me whatever you want to do lord you can do through me whatever you want to say lord you can say through me whoever you want to lift lord you can lift through me whoever you want to change lord you can change through me this is the reason i'm yours jesus i'm yours forevermore i'm yours Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Listen, every time I pray, I go with childlike faith and I tell the Lord, I am not much by myself. When you add me up, I don't amount to much by myself. But if ever you are looking for a tool to reveal your glory to the nations, from the frailty of this voice that you hear, find a vessel in me. That is the biggest secret to the life of this man you see standing. It is not because we are extraordinarily intelligent in ourselves. It is not because we have some advantage outside of Jesus. It is that we have mastered the art of casting our crown and saying, I am available. If you can find a vessel in me, let me be that treasure in earthen vessel. I may not amount to much by myself, but I know that with you, there is no limit to what I can do. And he says, you mean you are determined to reveal me? Hold my hands and let me take you to the nation i'm speaking to someone here you have tried to be famous without jesus it has refused to work you have tried to make money you have tried ministry quit all those mundane ambitions and go back to realizing that all can be yours when all of you belong to him all can be yours when all of you belong to him that everything i seek ah, all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. I'll give you a little story to the glory of God. When the Lord gave me 
the revelation to organize the conference in the United Kingdom the Lord said this is beyond the conference I want to do to produce a sign and a wonder through your life there is a statement that I want to make to the body of Christ that I can lift men I can embrace them and that there is nothing impossible hallelujah the entire preparation for that conference was done in less than three months and then God gave me an instruction now this was a unique instruction he said do not collect offering you will feed all the workers and I will bring there is a message that I want to give the church in Europe that the reason why you are excelling is not because of the times and the economy and he said that program will be organized during a weekday if you know anything about Europe you don't go and organize a program during a weekday no a weekday where people are having their jobs and yet that was the instruction God gave can I tell you you will remain a sign and a wonder when your life is poured out as a drink offering to reveal him and what God did there with I'm not somebody who likes to talk about all these kinds of things I just give God glory and I continue to move but it's a phenomenal message and can I tell you God is in the business of raising ordinary men in this season you will see men who don't look like it but they will still be used as mighty tools and that includes you if you are interested don't sit down and say listen when it was time for Samuel to anoint the next king there was Eliab, well built, already positioned for the palace, looking like you, the seat will fit you. But God said, that's not how I work. Go and find that young boy. There are some of you, God brought you to this conference because he has been looking for you. How do I get you to anoint you? How do I separate you to anoint you? And God created a convergence, a meeting like this, as an opportunity to place something upon your life. Hallelujah. The only condition ladies and gentlemen there is a place for diligence success has principles and laws but the greatest that i know is to be an available vessel the greatest principle i know and believe me i have known and by the grace of god i have taught the precepts that can help men to ascend heights in life and destiny the greatest of them that i know beyond your prayer beyond your fasting you can fast with a heart that is full of lust and just wanting self glorified you can pray with a heart that is just full of self the greatest preparation for an extraordinary life is total surrender total surrender when all of you becomes a tool a mirror to reveal Jesus in its entirety you have signed up for a life of greatness where you will be envied by nations they will look around your life and you don't look like it what exactly is the factor in the life of this man of God this businessman this parent that you may not be educated but you can gather your four or five children and say Lord I may come from a family that does not have any comeliness but I hand over these five children there are two girls and three boys make out of them everything you desire and God said that is it let me make one a prophet one esther one elijah one ruth let me make one gideon and you will watch those ordinary children from their lowly estate because of a covenant that their parents had with god if you are looking for the secret to being mightily used by god i can tell you prayer fasting and all these other spiritual activities only become relevant when your heart condition has been sorted otherwise it can become a ritual a burdensome ritual that is just a display of hypocrisy and fanatism without genuine connection hallelujah this is the reason why god continues to isolate certain people and to scale height for seven years i've had the honor and the privilege of coming to this church and i have watched god lift his servant i have watched god lift the household of david i can tell you there may be a lot of things that were put in terms of systems administration but the greatest basis for the lifting of men i remember one time we we're traveling to abel Kuta and 
pastor was driving me and we're going and we're discussing and all we're discussing was our love for jesus and the fact that in his prophetic end time program we can position ourselves to reveal him when it becomes about joshua selman you have lost touch with eternal things when it becomes about wanting fame when it becomes about wanting greatness in isolation to the revelation of jesus you have lost it everything in the kingdom finds its relevance from its ability to reveal jesus i am gifted your gift does not matter to god until you hand it over as a drink offering and say lord can you use this gift you gave me the ability use it for my glory i'm saying this because before we get into the impartation we are going to have five minutes of total surrender you're going to be handing over everything the first assignment this morning is a handover ceremony hand over that ministry so that it does not kill you for nothing hand over your children hand over your gift in everything it says but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him god does not keep what you have he keeps what is committed to him some of you here are men of god already some of you are being groomed to be the end time battle acts that the lord will be using in lagos and across the west can i tell you you are only scheduling your life for disappointment if all you think that will make you a great man of god is just revelation and the ability to preach well it takes more than good speaking prowess to affect a generation there is something a message that only your heart and your work with god can deliver to a generation there are some of you here who have been ordained to be god's end time financial apostles but as it is right now in spite of your business acumen in spite of your strategic relationships beautiful ideas that you have on paper it may never truly come to fruition because something about your heart is not yet surrendered apostle i've been trusting god for a husband I've been trusting God for a wife. What is it about a spouse God cannot give me? He's waiting until the state of your heart becomes a messless reflection of his glory because there is a prophet that has been ordained to come from your womb and with this kind of orientation you would destroy the destiny of that child you do not yet know the purpose of your pregnancy so God is working on you dear Mary he will delay you from getting married to Joseph until you understand that the reason why he kept you is because Jesus wants to pass through your womb listen i've had the honor and the privilege and i'm saying this with every sense of responsibility and humility there are things god told me many years ago i would not have imagined that he will make them happen at this level of my life i have stood before kings and presidents i have stood before billionaires i have stood before people that would be an honor for ordinary men to stand in god has taken me to places that has left me in tears and many times i ask god why and the simple answer is for as long as you are available he told me this many years ago that if you will let men see me there is nothing i would not give you if you will let men see me i was discussing not too long with one of our fathers of faith in this nation and i was just asking him a few questions as to consistency in ministry and I looked at him and I learned something from his life. There is never an arrival mentality with him. That every time I've had the opportunity to drink from the wealth of his many years of knowledge, all that you hear him say is that there is more. And with humility and childlike faith, I become stretched to know that we've done much, maybe a little, but there is still a lot more to be done for someone you came for this conference so that the grace of god will swallow pride away from you because that pride is building itself to become the obstacle that stops you from going forward you pride yourself in all the whole 
paraphernalia of your achievements and God is saying in his presence even though you are an elder you will still remove your crown the Bible says the elders take away their golden crown it takes a lot to be an elder your crown is proof of your achievement but you can take it down so that we don't waste our time impartation is not just about falling down and rising it's not just about shouting amen the foundation for genuine impartation is that you must die to self you must die to self many people wonder why they attend anointing services hands are laid upon them prophetic words come it will only rest upon the lust that is hidden in the heart it is only god who knows the state of our heart there are people today if god prospers you like you have been praying for you will become a casualty to yourself your family and the kingdom there are people if god opens certain doors it's not demons that are closing the door it's the mercy of god that is keeping that door from being closed because because there is a state of heart you must have for that open door to profit you hallelujah this has been my desire to stir up a generation to love Jesus number one but to see to it that in your death is your life you must die to self die to your ambitions to die to them is not to ignore them to die to them is to exalt Jesus above them and to connect every ambition to the revelation of Jesus I stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and I am speaking to his people with every sense of sincerity I have no other agenda in my life except to see Jesus revealed even if God prohibits me from preaching today the mission of Jesus being revealed through my life continues because preaching was only one of the ways hallelujah if you can get to this stage today where you say lord purge my heart i have idols in my heart i want to prosper so i can prove a point to people that i'm not a failure too small a reason i want to be great give me children so that people will stop calling me barren woman too small a reason lord i want to prosper as a young man because i i just need to feel good too small a reason but the moment kingdom come becomes part of your agenda the revelation of jesus you have you have entered into the realm of answered prayers you have entered into the realm of speed you have entered into the realm where god finds men makes men and uses them greatly can i tell you god is still looking for men don't say there are enough men jesus himself said the harvest is wide and there are few laborers the prayer is not for the harvest we usually pray longly he said pray that you will find more laborers because when there are more laborers the harvest is doable the problem is we have been praying for laborers as preachers alone preachers are the, not the only kind of laborers we need kingdom financiers as laborers we need men of influence as laborers we need people sent to the system as laborers then of course we need men and women at the pulpit as laborers in the next five minutes before we allow the lord to rain down his presence here i don't know i want you to take a position you want to cry you want to lie down in the next five minutes i leave you to your maker please do not waste this moment of destiny cry from the depth of your heart Purge my heart, oh God. Purge my heart. Purge my heart. You are a preacher. Take away your preaching crown and drop it on the floor and cry before the God of heaven. Someone pray. More love. More power. More of you in my life. More love, uh, more power, more of you in my life. Shaleba shalaga de bereke to more power, more power, more of you in my life. Sing more love. More more power, more are power, you praying? More of you in my life. See in the 
understand that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us lord you can trust me someone pray that prayer lord you can trust me i will not disappoint you by the grace of god you can trust me with wealth you can trust me with power you can trust me with influence don't say god give me a job say you can trust me with a job that through that job i can reveal your glory don't say give me children say you can trust me with children don't say give me a spouse say you can trust me with a spouse don't say god give me a church say you can trust me with members and I will raise them and build them. I will teach them. I will be a pastor according to your heart. No time to play games with God's people. Someone is praying. Let this be a moment of deep consecration for some repentance, for some realignment, for some a fresh committal why is my business not rising i am in lagos a place of opportunities you have tried principles why don't you try surrender and genuine dedication take a minute and pray the song we sing they all belong to you even the air we breathe it all belongs to you the songs we sing it all belongs to you and even the air we breathe it all belongs to you belongs to you shaleba safraska balanda kashopra godoba sadegata belongs to you hallelujah can i tell you sincerely this is how i do business with god i don't do business with god by asking i do business with god by yielding father if you trust me with a greater dimension of grace let it be known to you that as your spirit embraces me the nations will only see you as they see me they will see you as they see me in my preaching be glorified hallelujah i'm about to pray for you but i want to give you the last few seconds let him purge your heart take away all the lusts and everything that has interrupted your rising Some of you are crying. Do not be ashamed. This is the house of God. When Jesus is revealed, the saints are purged. When Jesus is revealed, the saints are aligned. Was it not in the revelation of Jesus that the seven churches were cautioned? Was it not in the revelation of Jesus that he showed us a portrait of the bride? He says, come and I will show you the lamb's wife. And he showed me a city equal in length and breadth and height and said that is the lamb's wife take a few seconds and pray thank you jesus i hand over this business I hand over this church I cannot do it by myself I ask you to help me 
Alleluia. Alleluia. A gentleman once met me and said, Apostle, what would be the one secret that you think is responsible for what God is doing in your life? And I told him, I said, all the things you are going to say as suggestions are wrong. I study to the glory of God. I pray. I fast. I learn. But none of those things are the real reason behind the hand of God. I can tell you the real reason. I never forget where he's brought me from. And I remember, you see, when you forget where God took you from, there is something, there is a healthy anchor. There is an anchor that your memory of yesterday can bring to you. You remember how he picked you. Oh dear David, do not let the palace make you forget that you were once in the wilderness. Some of you, you have forgotten where God took you from. It is good to remember that he took you and brought you to Lagos and you did not even have a place to stay. Now that you are an estate owner, never forget. It is easy to submit when you remember. Personat sang it beautifully and said, I remember your goodness. I remember. Many people forget. He says, let it not be that when you are built houses, please hear me, you are a man of God here, you are a preacher especially. Always go back to remember. Once upon a time you had no voice. Once upon a time you had no comeliness. Once upon a time there was no grace speaking upon your life. The nations did not even know you were there. Yet, in that depraved situation, there was still an ancient king sitting on the throne. The one who lifts men. Now he has granted you access to taste of his hand. It would be foolishness to forget him in the midst of mundane opportunities. I would rather ministry live a thousand times so that the one who met me when nobody knew me, I rather remain. He is called the first and the last. Anybody who was not there does not deserve to be first and will not be last. Will only be found somewhere in between that equation. For some of you, God is calling you. Now you are ashamed of Jesus. You are so wealthy. He looks like an interruption to your growth. You are so blessed. You are a great preacher. Expanded and enlarged. Ladies and gentlemen, return to that place. I remember I'm now a mother of four. But once upon a time I was in my fear. Will a man ever come to marry me? And his faithfulness, he came to pick me from my lowly estate. How about those who you never imagined from the family you came from that you may be able to go to school and yet God picked you and you came probably to serve in Lagos. Today you are well established. No, never forget his goodness. The psalmist said, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his name. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are everything. You are everything. Lord, we are not ashamed to let the nations know that you are everything doesn't matter the names that they call us you are everything listen you are the thirst you are the stream you are the hunger living deep inside of me you are the food that satisfies you are provision for the journey of my life you 
are everything. Hallelujah. Someone reached me not too long from a nation and said the presidency of that nation has mandated that we reach you, that they want you to come and hold a national day of prayer for that nation. And when I was done with the conversation, I put my head down and I said, Lord, you said this, that if I will let men see you, there is nothing you cannot do. And then I told him, I said, no problem. Let me go back to the one who lifted me and ask him if that is consistent with his will. Because the foolishness of rising is to assume that just because it's good, it is the will of God. Do you still have the patience to return back? That all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. That your life, it is his yes that becomes the marching order. And his no becomes your eternal restraint. Even in the midst of plenty, if he says no, his desire becomes your command. This is what it means to be surrendered. To, to be surrendered is beyond just crying. You can cry and still be a rebel. The ability to hear his yes and to hear his no. Hallelujah. I want to use the next few minutes to pray for you. There is a grace that I have discerned that is coming upon the body of Christ. I have discerned this grace in my place of prayer. There is a kind of anointing that not many people carry in a generation. But that grace has been searching for men. The Bible says among many prophets, there was none like this one, John the Baptist. He came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. So why would the Bible says among all the prophets, there was none like him? You know why? Because none of the prophets revealed Jesus directly. If it was based on miracles, Elijah did not do any miracles. If it was based on accuracy of the prophetic, Elijah did not do much. But the one who was directly responsible for the revelation of Jesus was the one who the Bible considered to be the greatest of prophets. So the greatest businessman will not be the one with the greatest account. It will be the one who used his wealth greatest to reveal Jesus. The greatest parent will not be the one who raised children and educated them well. In the mind of God, Greatness is measured with respect to the revelation of Jesus. The greatest ministry, therefore, may not even be the Joshua Selmans. You would only clap because we seem to be the ones appreciated by society. That intercessor who is quiet that may never go online. The one who is praying us to remain stable and relevant. Those may be the ones who are great. You see, the day Jesus comes, we are going to be surprised. That many of us who you think are the ones who will be in front you will see nameless faces that have never gone online nameless faces that may not even be able to speak english that mama that only prays in yoruba but prays by the spirit and say lord keep this young man standing those people you see are the ones who their lives are eternally committed to revealing jesus when you know this it gives you wisdom to stay humble Pride is proof you have forgotten something about God. There is a revelation of God that perpetually keeps you in humility. That you know that God has options eternally. But it's a privilege to be found in his program. But there is a grace. And I want to pray for you. We have about 10 minutes. I want your heart to be open. There are many people who miss out on impartations because all they are concerned about is falling down and rising up or they think that all there is to impartation is releasing graces to be able to preach on the pulpit. No. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. Doing good is more than preaching. Doing good still by the anointing. Healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Allow me this morning to stand as a privileged steward and a conduit to allow some of these graces to rest upon you. There are some of you, by reason of the grace that rests upon you, is a pioneering grace. When that grace comes upon you, 
you find out that the grace to pioneer whether it's a ministry whether it's a business pioneering comes with a grace there are many people who do not have the grace but want to start things that never start hallelujah and God is looking for abundance of men it was Charles and Francis Hunter John G. Lake also said that too Smith Wigglesworth said that that before Jesus Christ returns sir, that there will be a resurrection of the healing ministry it looks like from the 70s into the 80s maybe early 90s the healing ministry began to fade away do you know why? because there was an abundance of intellectualism and nothing wrong with that but it was overemphasized and it now began to downplay on spirituality so people chose logic or the holy spirit it looked like the holy spirit was left for uneducated people and most educated people did not seem to see the relevance of the holy spirit so the supernatural faded with intelligence but it must be restored paul was an intelligent man and in addition to his intelligence the holy spirit came upon him and he became apostle paul hallelujah ladies let me start with you this womb god gave you is not just for children hallelujah your mind is a womb and then for a woman your womb is a miracle because that is the only if God had designed five ways of bringing another life to the earth and say a woman's womb is only one of them but God in his intelligence designed that as vast and as technology is we have not perfected the art of ignoring that system and having children a woman's womb is a miracle can I tell you I know that Jesus is coming soon but I perceive in my spirit that there is a dimension of revival and the revelation of Jesus that is children that will bring. I know our focus is on just adults, but you think these young ones coming up do not have a role to play in God's end time program? Think again. Joash was a king at age eight. Josiah was a king at age nine. Hallelujah. And so I want to start by praying for the women and the ladies. When Jesus resurrected, the first person who saw him was a woman. There is a reason why the Bible made that happen. The first person the angel came to speak to about the arrival of Jesus was a woman. The first person the angel spoke to or Jesus spoke to at his resurrection was a woman. Women, let me tell you the truth. You have a program in God's end time agenda. And I'm not just talking of preaching. I know something about the prayer of a woman. I know something about the fast. Everybody prays, but let a woman pray for you and you will know God answers prayer. Everybody decrees, but when a woman cries against you before God, it is only the mercy seats that will speak for you. Hallelujah. Many ladies have thrown away their bishopric because their whole concern is centered just around family life. Let me just marry and get a husband and have children and have a small job. My dear ladies, let me tell you, there is a cry in the bowels of the spirit. Many of you have seen it in your dreams and your visions. Today we talk about great men, but respectfully speaking, there are few who has occupied the shoes of Catherine Kuhlman, who has carried the mantles of Amy Semple McPherson. It's not because God does not want to bring these graces. It's because there are hearts that are closed therefore let me release that grace I don't know where you are but I want to pray for you that something from heaven will come upon you I, I feel inspired to start my prayer for the ladies now and we're going to do that very fast we have just about 10 minutes if I do ask you to bring the people out please do bring them out quickly there is a reason why I ask you to bring those under the anointing hand. father I don't know what Deborah what Esther what Mary, who is that whose womb must birth Jesus in this season? Haris Koba Shali Geberetuya. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I want you to quickly bring them out. My God, I'm seeing like smoke just in this room. Lord Jesus, rest upon the women, rest upon the ladies. 
rest upon them by the spirit of the living God in the name of Jesus Lagos it's time for women ministries to arise women who understand the sounds of the spirit please bring them up some of you God is calling you to be prophetic intercessors some of you may be saying I am old no not in the spirit I decree and declare let that mantle that has been looking for you at the revelation of Jesus he tried to come on your mother and she refused he tried to come on your loved ones and they refused may it rest upon you please bring them out in the name of Jesus the son of the living God may that grace rest upon you now the grace to pray receive the blueprint of the spirit even for this end time Help that lady, please. Help that lady. Help that lady. Now, hear me. We are still praying. The Lord is telling me to release a grace on parents. There are some of you among your three children. It's good to love all of them. But the son who has a call. There are many who have an end time call. And as a parent, you must raise them after the order of the assignment. I stretch my hands. The eyes to see. The ears to hear. To discern. Mary had other children. But Jesus was trained in a way that allowed him to excel in his assignment. I release that grace upon every parent. The grace to see the destiny of your children and to align them across the path of destiny in the name of Jesus Christ be sensitive we are praying hallelujah now I want to pray there are many many prophetic ministries that have arisen in time past and maybe in the last decade or so and one of the challenges of the prophetic ministry has been you know problems especially as regards genuineness of spirituality and consecration and then principles and practices but one of the things that God is doing is that there is a rebirth of the prophetic ministry it was on this altar I remember a few years ago I shared a vision that God showed me. You remember, Pastor Shola? That I saw a particular prophetic ministry in this nation. That it looked as though maybe they are out of relevance. I saw light returning to that prophetic ministry. And God said he had a covenant with the founder of that ministry. And he's coming again to honor it. I want to pray. There will be a real emergence of prophets. Some of you are even afraid of the prophetic now because you think that the prophetic is now associated with falsehood and lies. There can be genuine people sound in doctrine, having character, and then become great cutting edge prophets. I stretch my hands. Everyone called into that assignment, male or female, my God, I decree and declare, wherever you are, let that man to rest on you now. Let that man to rest on you now. Gentlemen, there are many of you, Lagos, from Lagos to the nations. Please bring them out. I decree and declare every gentleman here, anointed by God to be a prophet. I decree and declare, may that grace rest on you. I've studied about the prophetic in Nigeria. And for a strange reason, I've studied about many, many prophets that God raised from the West here, from Oyo State, Abel Kuta. Some of them were not people that were known. There are the ones that are known, but there are the ones that were not known. Unspoken prophets, from blind prophets to uneducated ones, these were men with prophetic precision. I'm praying, let there be a resurrection of that same mantle. Let it rest on someone now. Let it rest on someone now. 
Let it rest on someone now. Let it rest on Sapakatoskatapa. Let it rest on someone now. Help that gentleman. Let that prophetic rest on someone now. Hallelujah. If you are in this place, I'm about to pray for you. And the call of God is upon your life. You may not even know it. God is saying, do not delay again. There are destinies connected to you. Some of you have literally run away like Jonah from the call of God. I want to release grace upon you. This grace is not for manifestation. This grace is so that you will begin a season of drillings and trainings in the spirit until you emerge. For some of you, by reason of this impartation, the grace to fast will come upon you. The grace to pray will come upon you. You will wake up and pray and prepare because the king's business requires haste. I don't know where you are. I'm seeing the number 27 in the name of Jesus wherever these persons are may that grace locate you now 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 hallelujah pastor shola the lord is ministering to me and he's saying there is a grace coming upon the household of David that will raise professionals. This is what I'm hearing. Professionals. People who will excel in career. You believe me as I tell you this. You will start seeing people come to testify that a job was given to me and whether within the country or outside of, of the country. Because you see, the tribe of David is also the tribe of influence. The Bible says that the least shall be as great as David. Let me release that grace. There are career people here. You have been stunted either by witchcraft or stunted by some kind of demonic thing. I stretch my hands upon you. May apparatus katiata. I'm seeing fire come on a few of you. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. The grace to excel in professional life. I release that anointing upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Professionals rising from household of David. Not just setting up companies, but many of you are being positioned strategically within Lagos, within Europe, within America. You may not look like it, but there is a grace that lifts men. God is called Ebenezer. He is able to raise men. I'm saying it again. Everyone who belongs to this category, may that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. Hallelujah. Let me ask you a question before I pray the next impartation. Do you believe in financial prosperity? You believe in the role that wealth has to play in God's end time agenda? I want to pray for you. You've heard me say the name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it high for the nations to see. Men money was used to shut the mouths of the guards at the grave to say he's not risen satan is still using money today to shut the values of the kingdom across nations across our sociology there are people there are agencies and organizations that on the strength of economic empowerment seem to be sabotaging the advancement of the purposes of the kingdom and let me tell you the truth there are men that god is raising in this end time Gentlemen, this is where many of you receive now because most of you think you are just being anointed to be preachers but there is a grace that is coming upon you and I want to release that grace right now. Father, in the name that is above all names, there are people that you desire to trust with the wealth of the kingdom for the purpose of advancing your program. 
I don't know where they are in this congregation but in the name that is above all names I'm seeing like just like rain but it is gold this is what I'm seeing and it's resting on people in the name of Jesus may that grace rest upon you now hear me the Lord taught me something recently and he said the power to prosper works in three ways it comes upon your mind your hands and your feet listen carefully the power to prosper comes upon your mind your hand and your feet your mind for creativity your hand for productivity your feet for accuracy of direction these are essential factors you want to prosper in this end time it must come upon your mind your hand and your feet now let me pray for you you know what i'm saying when i declare that the power to prosper comes upon you it's not just on your head your mind your hand and your feet the first revelation of the holy spirit was as a creative spirit hallelujah father i am praying again upon men and women here who have vowed to see you glorified through the resources you commit to their hands let this grace call the power to prosper let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now that between now and december may my god surprise you strange financial doors open for you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah anyone here who has been plagued by the yokes of witchcraft satanic orchestrations programming evil and pain in your life hallelujah i found myself praying over my people and declaring in many meetings that the lord sends me to to avert the spirit of death please allow me pray that prayer for you the spirit of death we do not rebuke the spirit of death because of the fear of death but i explained to you yesterday that your spirit needs your body to be intact so that the purposes of god can be completed through your life and one of the things that satan is doing is masquerading himself across families and looking for the ones that are lifted and to cut them away i decree and declare if there is anyone under the sound of my voice marked for death or you have had patterns of death in your family mysteriously this year some of you have lost loved ones and you know it should not be i pray for you let the manifestation of the spirit of death come to an end in your life and end in your family in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i pray one more prayer for you many of you have lost time in your life the worst thing to lose is time you can lose money but if you have time you will gain it back are we together for various reasons time has gone there are two ways that god redeems time in the life of a man number one is called restoration number two is called speed when god wants to restore time these are the spiritual forces that are released towards the life of a man and i will restore the years god restores years and he said i will he can give speed and acceleration to your destiny i pray for you for everyone here who has lost time by the forces of restoration and the forces of speed i decree and declare be restored now gain time gain time gain time gain time in the name of jesus christ gain time by the spirit in the name of jesus christ that god can take the events that should have happened in yesterday and fast forward them into your today and god can accelerate you so that you maximize your today that is what god is able to do i'm saying it again businessmen who have lost time parents who have lost time students who have lost time young people who have lost time 
elderly people who have lost time may my god who is also your god restore years for you restore years for you restore years for you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah finally i feel stirred in my spirit to say this i have watched pastor sholan his wife I have watched their children the bit of time that I have been with them and how many of you know that you are only able to be an effective minister when your home is in peace am I right on that there is a way that children can give you headache and you almost it will be like you are not hearing God again there is a way your spouse can frustrate you to a point where you almost feel like killing yourself i want to pray for peace in families let's not take it for granted there are families today people come to church the wife is in church the husband is in church but the truth is they are not together there are all kinds of problems there are children now just waiting to grow so they will kill their parents they have vowed and it's not just child talk there are spirits that can assist children to cause that kind of mayhem why do you give birth to a child who becomes the reason for your death please hear me when the devil tries to attack an individual and it does not work he will try to look for your children and cause you pain and pierce your heart with a lot of sorrow there are many people today their problem is not money there are many people today their problem is not career excellence their problem is not even spirituality their real problem is this only son that i have you gave me three girls and one boy this one boy now that i'm trusting to be an extension of the family name the devil has hijacked him already at age 12. children ask you questions today as an adult that you cannot sleep nonsense questions that came from internet or came from the devil and just destroys you i want us to pray believers let's not be careless over the children god has given otherwise a whole generation will be lost hallelujah respectfully speaking this was the carelessness of the west when their fathers and grandfathers were serving the lord they made the mistake they bought into the deception of pharaoh while he was negotiating with israel you can go but your wives and your children will remain and certain nations said yes and while their fathers were evangelists and pastors and prophets the devil was growing with their children some of their children today are leaders and you will never know that such spiritual heritage that they were connected to it may god forbid that any child in household of david that they will rise and then they will make up their mind and say although i was raised here i've chosen not to serve god we forbid it in jesus name i decree and declare any couple here and any family here going through any marital crisis in whatever form or fashion we call upon the prince of peace let peace return to every home shout a louder amen let peace return to every home and in the name of jesus the children are not here but wherever they are the sunday school we pray for them they are taught of the lord and great is their peace in the name of jesus because they are planted in the house of god we declare that they will flourish in the courts of our god no parents here will bury their children in the name of jesus and in the same vein we pray for those genuinely trusting god for the fruit of the womb as a consolation to their family in the name of jesus by this time next year we declare by the spirit return with your miracle children for in jesus matchless name we have prayed so i speak to you one last time learn from this entire conference that your singular mandate is not just to know about jesus christ but that everything around your life finds its relevance to the degree to which it is directly connected to the revelation of jesus let your prayer be connected to the revelation of jesus let your giving i understand that you are supposed to give we all are supposed to give in this final conference let it not be done as a ritual but let it be done with respect 
to your desire to see Jesus revealed. My precious worship team people, let your singing be with respect to the revelation of Jesus. Businessmen, as you go to the office tomorrow, is beyond just an avenue to make more money. See it as an opportunity to have Jesus revealed. A generation that places the revelation of Jesus in front of them, becoming their ultimate and most superior motivation, is the generation that will never be lost as far as God's program is concerned. May the Lord bless you, household of David, and increase you. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Now, those who want to give specially, you will do that. And I just want to speak just one word over all of us in, in the area of finances as we give. Please, just. Thank you, sir. Before we let him go. Hallelujah. Pastor. After that, you can just transfer once okay. done. We are not going back to that again. Okay, so um, I'm happy. I'm excited. I'll be the first to do my own here. <laughs> don't preach what you don't believe. Salah Hallelujah. If you don't believe it, stay and understand it before you preach it. I will never come and pray over people's finances and then carry my Bible and go back. It makes me a hypocrite. We are people of integrity who love the Lord. Hallelujah. So whilst we pray, for me, I've, I've, I look forward to it and ask the Lord, what do I give? And it is with all joy, even though I've been invited here to preach. But the word of God does not care whether you're a guest preacher. Once you're a practitioner of the same, it will deliver for you. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6, the Bible says that he which sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He which sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Every man that he should give us according as he has proposed in his heart, not grudgingly but cheerfully, for God loves a cheerful giver. Then he says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that ye having sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. In the name of Jesus, I stand in faith with Pastor Shola, the angel over this house, and the leadership of the entire household of David, both the ones that are here in the headquarters and all the expressions around the globe. In the name of Jesus, we agree as a family of faith that this giving may it be your connection to the next level financially shout a believing amen. amen some of you right now you are giving out of pain i bring you a word of comfort the bible says he that weepeth bearing precious seeds will doubtless return rejoicing again bringing the sheaves i decree and declare that god who you have given to by faith may he visit you even beginning from today I call your businesses blessed. I call your families blessed. Your mind is blessed. Your finances blessed. No going down. In the midst of lack and scarcity, I prophesy to you that there will be a lifting up. We give your seed another body and we command it to go and gather its kind and to return to you a thousandfold. Your giving is blessed. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you. Can we appreciate our dear man? Let's appreciate the apostle. We can do better.